I'm never, I would never lose to a white boy in my life. I don't care what nobody <laughs> got to say. It's like, ain't no white boy beat me on, on any day of the week. When I was a casual, I thought as a casual, I spoke like a casual, and I looked at boxing like a casual. But when I became a hardcore, I put away all those casual things. This is Michael Rogers, and welcome to Bodywork Box. Welcome back. It's Michael Rogers. Welcome to Bodywork Boxing. Here we have it. Here we have it. The boxing gods have spoken. Undisputed. At 135 pounds. Between one Devin Haney. And one George Cambosos. Who will be the seventh? Is the question. And they had the press conference yesterday. And I saw it. You know. And it was looking real WWE WWF ish. <laughs> I mean, it was looking like I mean, it, it was looking like George Cambosis was getting up under Devin Haney skin. Um, it was a lot of boy talk with Cambosis dressing Haney as a boy, and Devin saying, "You know, I'm a man. Address me as such. I'm gonna show you in the ring." It was a whole lot of talking, and. Cambosis, he, I think part of his game is mental. I think he, he gets up under his opponent's skin. He uses everything to his advantage. He's a little older, so he might be a little bit more mature. Um, I think that he's still feeling kind of disrespected, like how T.O. was when he had all the belts. Because you got to remember, T.O. went and got a belt and then beat Loma, so he had two fights. He had two title bouts where he actually had belts on the line and fought for him, and he pretty much got all the belts except for the one that the WBC had emailed Devin Haney by way of Loma. Cambosis come along and knock Tio off the cliff, you know. So he has the majority of the belts. Only thing left is the WBC regular, and that's what's on the line. There was a lot of hoopla being made about, uh, for a lot of people saying they don't be pocket watching. There was a lot of people talking about how much of a pay cut Devin Haney had. I'm like, are we, and they'll tell you, I'm a boxing fan. Well, as a boxing fan, I mean, we get in a fight. I was doing um, part of my little resume x-ray. And I actually put the magnifying glass down on the young Lord Devin Haney's resume. So you guys might want to go back and do that before you get overzealous with all these claims that you all are making. Um, I think that <clears throat> George Cambosis is highly underrated. I spoke about early in the week. I did a video about how Andre Ward and Timothy Bradley, with clips from Timothy Bradley, talking about the strengths and weaknesses of the 135 division of Tank, of Devin, of George, and they're going to be calling the fights. I pointed out that they had been calling, you know, hey, commentating and calling on a couple fights that ended in controversy, and they was with the controversy. <laughs> so, I mean, I talked about that element. I don't think that that's all coming into play. I mean, the fact that Devin has to go over there and do it twice, he's going in foreign territory. It's you know, it has to get acclimatized. It's altitude changes. It's, you know, your rhythm can be a little bit off. It's a hostile environment with a hostile crowd. We've seen what happened when Regis Progray went over there and fought Josh Taylor. Afterwards, Josh Taylor faced up like hamburger meat. 
Regis comes up short, there was no rematch. But Devin has to go do it twice. That's how good he has to be. I see Bill intervene on the press conference, you know, and got between them. But, you know, all of the acting and the tough talk and all that, it's going to be, man, it's going to be, it's going to be wow. Because ESPN did a good job. Nobody's talking about, um, I guess, the advertisement or the marketing for somebody who didn't know how to market Bud. Man, I think I think Bud's lawsuit just got shot in the ass. But I told you what I thought that was. That was like an uh, episode of Martin, you know. Um, go back through the videos. You'll see what I'm talking about. If you've been watching, you know what I'm talking about. But... Um, I think Buzz lawsuit just got shot in the ass because he was able to suitor over Devin Haney from the zone on to ESPN for a three fight deal, which I had been saying what was wrong with that because he had never left the zone. Ironically, he leaves the zone. So Devin Haney is standing on what he said, and he said he'll never let a white boy beat him. That's what he said. And it's time to show and prove. You know, it's always been this thing about him and the weight and how long he been doing and how eventually, just like T.O. was doing before, you know, his big fight and all of that. And, you know, so it could be one of them grab and goes. He go over there and get the job done. He's like a 55% knockout artist, so I guess he's going to outbox. This is 50-50 chance. That um, he's just going to outbox him or he can knock him out. That's 50 50. You know, so out of 27 people, he knocked out a little bit more than half. So I'm guessing we want to expect a boxing clinic. Right. Um, a lot of elements to this fight. A lot of elements to this fight. And I think that um, pretty much everything is going to be established inside the ring. You know, George Cambosos has a history of beating Mickey, Mickey Bay, who's affiliated with Devin. Um, he also beat Teofimo. Teofimo came in with the wrong game plan. Of course, um, you know, I, he's shown that he has veteran savvy. He got knocked down in the 10th round. I think he wound up coming back and winning the championship rounds dominantly. Which probably what really, you know, took that fight over into his hands. He actually went and took that fight. You know, with history of Devin getting rocked by Linares, but dominating that fight for the majority of the time. So they both can be dominant. You know, this is a this is a coming of age. This is a paradigm shift where Devin Haney bet on himself on this one. And I salute him for actually going through with it and. You know, following through with what he said this time. Following through with what he said this time. And you got an American against an Australian in times of war, so everybody got to represent their country. So he just like grabbing his nuts on that one. And I, but I don't understand all the pushback from everybody else for Cambosis being a champion, wanting to bring it back home. I didn't understand what was the big. Never heard so much about that. You know, I mean, as a champion, the majority champion, because he does have all of the belts except for, he even has a WBC belt, he just doesn't have the regular. Um, so, very interesting fight. It's on for June 5th. Um, we'll see what happens, but we got the Lord Devin Haney, as they call him, and they have Ferocious. Cambosis, the Emperor. <laughs> you know why I need Devin to win this fight, man. I need Devin to win this fight so Tank can just come along and just, you know what I'm saying. I guess, you know, since everybody said they want Tank to jump off the porch. Like, he ain't jumped off the porch in several different weight divisions, but I digress. So Tank can just come off and jump off the porch. He already is going to be the WBA um, mandatory to whoever, whoever had the WBA after that. So somewhere in the mix, they can toss Tank in there. He has that belt. They call it a secondary belt. But, I mean, I guess they were smart in maneuvering because he had ties to any where he wanted to go with the belts he had since they were consolidating the belts. That was a chess move. 
that um, I don't think anybody really saw, but the way he's managed, the way he's promoted, all that working out, and I would like just to culminate with him. Hey, George Cambosa said he'll bring that back to Baltimore. So an in, in incentive for George to win is because t he said on record, he's on foul saying that he would fight Tank in Baltimore. And I got that from the Rise Podcast. Shout out to them guys over there, Senior Cobbs, Coach Squeeze, Coach Kenny, Coach Calvin, all of them. So, I mean, Devin should win so Tank, them and Tank can get it on, get this mega fight. You know what I'm saying? The fight that everybody want. Can Bosa's can win so he can bring that ass over here to Baltimore and get that ass, man, brutalized. You know what I'm saying? I was at the last one that they had down there in Royal Farms. You know. And um, New Year's. Got to getting cocky, but hey, that's neither here nor there. Undisputed, number seven is in the making. Hopefully nobody pulls out. Hopefully there's no COVID. Hopefully there's no... No shenanigans, you know what I'm saying? We thought we had a, a, a uh, Jamel and Castaño a couple months back. We thought we had that in the books, and then something happened. But then we, that's back on the books. Got a video about that coming up as well. Thanks for all my new subscribers. You know what I'm saying? We are actually we're growing, we're increasing. You know, we just we're just doing our thing, man. Thanks for everybody to take the time to watch the videos. You know, any feedback, I respond to everybody unless I just know it's absolute foolishness. But I love to hear from you. Like, comment, subscribe. Here where we feed the clones. Here at Body Work. But we don't take things for face value. We do that body work. Alright. I believe you. But my tummy can talk. Get down on your knees and tell me you love me. My words, I do what I do. He knows what I'm about to tell him right now. It's Mr. Keep running your mouth. That's what I do. Uh, I just feel like I'm the champ, and at the end of the day, I'm just, uh, just fighting my focus. It doesn't matter. Inside, outside, I can just fight. So I just feel like if you if get down to the wire and we got to lock it up, I'm out on top. Hey, man, listen, hey, listen, I, as you can see how I'm looking, I, I stay solid. I, I'm always solid. I stay fucked up. Yeah, I'm going to say it before. I'm going to say it before.